The Borderlands franchise has evolved a lot over time. The quality of life features have only gotten better and better. For those wondering, quality of life in gaming is defined as being the elements that cover a broad range of features that are designed to make the game easier and play without changing the gameplay itself. Now, I am all for any Borderlands game getting more campaign DLCs, new playable characters, takedowns, more raid bosses, and more, but that is not the focus of the video. I want to focus directly on quality of life features that could make Borderlands 4 better when it eventually drops in the future. Let's look at the timeline. Back in Borderlands 1, the game was quite simple. It was the starting point of the franchise, so it makes sense. Then Borderlands 2 dropped, and oh my goodness. There were so many quality of life upgrades from the previous game. Just to list a few, we had auto pickup for money and health files, a mini map, visible skill point boost with class mods, a field of view slider, moving and fight for your life, a faster traveling system, a resettable playthrough, giant red health bars above your boss on the top of the screen, many dedicated item drop locations, and a lot more. At the time, I was blown away by how many quality of life features I was missing out on, and I didn't really stop to think that there was more that I really needed. Then Borderlands 3 dropped, and yeah, I was wrong. Borderlands 3 brought us sliding, mantling, throwing barrels, fast travel from anywhere, auto pickup iridium, skippable cutscenes, buy all ammo button, NPCs revive you, loot instancing, alternate firing modes for guns, more inventory and bank storage, and many other things. Haha. Uh -huh. Moving on to Tiny Tina's Wonderland, it did bring us a few more things. Uh, you could sell all junk by looking at the front of a vendor, vendor item quality increases with your level, even more bank space, uh, you can hold the melee button down and constantly swing, cryo damage over time didn't slow you down for as long as it did in PL3, you can use your alternate damage source aka spells and fight for your life, you can melee or slide into ammo boxes to open them, there are health barrels, barrels can blow up in one shot when they're airborne, a difficulty slider that can be adjusted at any time, and I'm sure there's a few other things too. <sighs> That was a lot to list off, but the point is, the quality of life additions have improved from game to game. Now let's move on and list a few quality of life additions that would be awesome to have in Borderlands 4. First off, I'm not going to be listing any of the quality of life features we saw in previous games like cutscene skip or buy all ammo from vendors, etc. Those are a no-brainer and pretty much all of the previous quality of life things we had in previous games should be in Borderlands 4. Thanks to the help of the community over on Twitter, I asked what you guys want to see for quality of life features in the next Borderlands game, and oh boy, did you guys mention a lot of good ones. Once again, I was dumbfounded on how many more quality of life features we currently don't have. Now, these are in no particular order, so let's start off with a simple one. Marking items as trash on pickup. This would make managing your backpack and money so much easier since you wouldn't have to hassle opening your backpack, hovering over the item, and marking as trash to sell later on. You could simply stand over the loot pile and spam one button to clean it up instead of leaving it to despawn. This next one would make managing your loot so much easier. And that is teleporting your loot straight to the bank from anywhere. It's a bummer when your backpack is full and you have to drop one of your beloved items to make room for the new items. So instead, what if we could hover over an item in our backpack and click one button to send it to the bank? That would make the looting experience so much better and minimize extra travels needed to store your loot away. Speaking of the bank, it would also be amazing if we had a search bar in our bank too. I don't know about you, but searching through 500 items for a specific one was not enjoyable in Wonderland. By adding a search bar, you would type in the item you're looking for, and it would allow you to easily pinpoint your items. One small extra thing they could add to the bank too is simply selling stuff from your bank. I noticed it did become a problem in Wonderlands in which I only had like 5 slots available in my inventory. So if I wanted to clean up maybe 100 items from my bank, that would be 20 trips to the vendor with my already full inventory. So all of these upgrades to the bank would make the experience so much better. Up next, refreshing the map without save quitting. As of now, some players waste anywhere from 20 seconds to over a minute watching loading screens when farming in Borderlands 3 and Wonderlands. While some of us love farming bosses over and over for loot, there needs to be a better way to refresh the map and boss without save quitting out the game. Many other looter games have already shown this method of farming is doable, and it would honestly be an amazing addition to the Borderlands series. On top of that, if a save quit is done, it should no longer separate the co-op lobby. It only slows down the experience since players have to rejoin their friends to hop back into the game. The Borderlands series is heavy on co-op play and it's one of the many reasons people enjoy playing Borderlands, so keeping the lobby connected after a save quit is much needed for Borderlands 4. Moving on here, um, I don't know about you guys, but New Game Plus is important for replayability. We had it in Borderlands 2 and 3, but then it mysteriously disappeared in Wonderlands. Now, I don't know if it was an oversight or not, but having a New Game Plus is perfect for those who want to play through the story again on a geared up character. The option is there for those who want to do it, and players can dump more hours into the game. This would also be the perfect time to add dialogue skip too. This has been a community request since back when Borderlands 2 came out. We all love a little storytelling, but what happens once you've heard it too many times? 
it gets a bit tedious and you want to jump right back into the action. Currently, your only options are to sit around and wait for the dialogue to pass, or save quit which, like I mentioned before, is time consuming due to the loading screens. Have the option there for those who want to skip right into the gameplay and have fun. For the next quality of life edition, allow us to reroll passives on items with Iridium. In Wonderlands, the chance to roll a class mod with 3 to 5 passives that benefit your build are extremely low, like 1 in a million odds. There are a lot of passives I can roll, and if passive stats return to Borderlands 4, I can only see them adding a lot more. Now, I know this is a farming game and your perfect roll should be farmed, but the small power boost from getting the passives you're looking for isn't worth the insane time investment to roll such odds for most players. Farming a class mod with the right skill set is already hard enough, so allowing passive stat rerolling would reduce the endless grind. As for weapons, grenades, and shields, I do personally believe that you should be able to reroll the element, but that is a whole other can of worms I don't want to open for this video. Let's move on. As many of you know, there are a ton of different builds in the Borderlands series. You have melee builds, gun builds, damage over time builds, pet builds, and more. I don't know about you guys, but I can't tell you how much time I've wasted trying to remember exactly what skill points I need to spec for a specific build. That is why I think it would be cool if we could save our skill trees in Borderlands 4. You put together your skill tree, and then save it at the customization station as a preset. And anytime you want, you can walk up to the customization station and swap skill trees on demand. That would make it much easier and allow players to jump right back into the action. This next one is an amazing feature that was added to Borderlands 2 with a mod, and that is the ability to reroll your mission reward item using Iridium. Let's say you rolled a gun reward that happened to be Corrosive Element, but you were looking for a fire one. You can click one button, spend some Iridium, and reroll to go for better. This reroll feature would also reduce the necessity to dashboard or read-only farm, which all the previous titles currently do if you're going for a specific item. It would make the farming experience so much smoother, and players could use this to better shape their builds during their playthrough. Here's a simple one. Duplicate protection on cosmetics. It is annoying to get a cosmetic drop that you already have, a dropping again. The only choices we currently have are leaving it on the ground to clog the lost loot machine, or we pick it up and sell it off for money. If you've already unlocked the cosmetic, please remove it from the loot pools altogether. They do nothing but make the player feel like they've been cheated out of an item drop. Alright, I've been saving some of the coolest quality of life features for last. This next one is one that I think would be insanely awesome to have in Borderlands 4, and that is a bestiary. It would keep track of all the different enemies and unique items you've encountered. For example, let's say you killed off some random boss during a side mission. You can then check your best area and see the boss has been discovered, and it would tell you basic information such as the enemy weight, map location, a little backstory, or even potential unique drops. Now, I know it sounds like Pokemon, but come on. Could you imagine keeping track of all your captured progress without a Pokedex? With Borderlands offering hundreds of different enemies, bosses, unique items, it almost feels necessary to have a way to track them. To take it a step further, after you had defeated some random enemy, the best area would display a blank item outline of their unique drop at the bottom of the card log. For example, let's say you killed Savage Lee. You can now look at his log and it will display an orange outline of a pistol with a question mark on it. You would now know he has a unique drop, but you don't know what it is. The player would then farm Savage Lee and eventually get the legendary Unkempt Herald pistol. When you go back to the log, the unique item now reveals itself as the Unkempt Herald at the bottom. Not only would the best area help new players keep track of enemies and item locations, but it would also be an amazing tool to help with the community hunt events that take place in all the Borderlands games. Plus, it would give us something more to do. Some of us are completionists and would do whatever it takes to reach 100% on your best area. This one is one that might fall out of the quality of life changes, but hear me out. Interactive cutscenes. Similar to how Tales from the Borderlands plays out, it would offer you choices during a cutscene or even quick time events to dodge attacks. The Tales from the Borderlands and the Borderlands series in general are amazing games, so why not just combine them together? Now, I cannot see the developers making big alternate story paths for a major game like Borderlands 4, for that would actually be a massive amount of work. But maybe interactive cutscenes could impact in a smaller way. For example, let's say there's a cutscene with a quick time event to dodge a punch from the villain. And let's say you fail to click the button and react to it. You get an alternate scene in which you get punched in the face, but the story still stays on track during the remainder of the cutscene. After the cutscene is over, your character lost almost all their HP as a small penalty for getting punched in the face. Okay, now let's play that same scenario again. This time you dodge the punch during the quick time event, and the villain smirks at you instead and the story proceeds as normal for the remainder of the cutscene. After the cutscene is over, you are rewarded with something for playing it out well. This could be a simple cash prize, a random weapon roll, some iridium, or anything else minor. Of course, some of us will want to skip the cutscenes after multiple playthroughs, so that option is available too. You can either skip the cutscene and get no rewards, or play it out and gain from it. 
Interactive cutscenes would also fix the problem of our characters not really being present during them, like all of the previous games. Our characters should have more of a choice in the matters at hand instead of being non-existent during cutscenes. Alright, on to the final quality of life addition I would like to see in Borderlands 4, which is item rarities being phased in and out for the rarity scale. All of the Borderlands titles so far follow early game right, which is you start off with your white rarity and green rarity items, and then as you progress you start finding blue rarity and eventually purple rarity. At end game, you start finding legendaries dropping more frequently than early game, and now the balance of how often legendaries should roll drop is a slippery slope, but my point is it follows through the rarity scale. You start your runs finding trash, and at the end you eventually find treasure. The issue is, the trash still persists at endgame too. Like 99% of players don't use white or green rarity items at endgame at all. In my opinion, I do think that white rarity and green rarity gear should be phased out once you've reached the endgame. The rarity scale should be pushed forward a little so nothing but blue, purple, legendary, and pearlescent should drop now. Pearlescent should be the rarest of the rare and only become unlockable at the endgame. Now, I've already made a video on why Pearl should return to the Borderlands series, so if you're interested, I will link that video down below in the description. We need a rarity chase to keep the endgame more alive and interesting, and I think that Pearlescent gear is the perfect way to achieve that. Obviously, Pearls would have to be good to justify the rarity, and Borderlands 4 could definitely achieve that. Anyways, I think that's everything I wanted to bring up today. Um, I'm sure I could think of a few more quality of life additions, but this video is already long enough. Let me know below in the comments what you guys think about any of these quality of life ideas, and be sure to share your own ideas if you have any in mind. We all love the Borderlands series for different reasons, but at the end of the day, we all want the ultimate Borderlands experience, and I do believe that Borderlands 4 could deliver if time, effort, and love is put into the game. And yeah, thank you guys for watching, hope you have an awesome day, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.